a Hyundai channel. This is my name's Gabby. My name's Pat. <laughs> and today we're going over the beautiful 2023 Telluride X Line, which is a brand new trim for Canada this year. And we also have a 2020 Telluride SX that we're going to compare. First, I wanted to say, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy these lives. We do them every day at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we do them for three reasons. What's number one? Number one is you may own a Kia or Hyundai, and you want to know more about the vehicle that you drive. Number two. <laughs> number two, you could be considering purchasing a Kia or Hyundai vehicle, and you want to know more about the vehicles, what they offer. We've done literally every single video in Kia's, um, Kia Canada and Kia Hyundai's lineup here. Kia going, Hyundai? Kia, Kia, Kia Hyundai. Hyundai Canada, oh my goodness. Today's okay. been a day. <laughs> I'll kick over the third reason we want you to, or we do these videos is, uh, if you're gonna buy a Kia or a Hyundai and you live in Ontario. Why not buy it from us? Yeah, buy it from us. <laughs> we're basically like your virtual salespeople anyway. We go yeah. over everything in the car. That's right. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. The actual walk around will start at around the three minute mark. So if you're watching us live now, you're stuck with us for about two more minutes. We're gonna show you guys how to join a live if you are watching this in the future and wanna catch our next one. Okay, let's do it. So first things first, you want to go to YouTube on your TV, browser, whatever it may be, and search up the Kia Hyundai channel. It's going to look a little something like this. And if it's a weekday around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you'll see a video under home or live that shows live and then whatever car we're filming. Today, we got this car a little bit later than usual, so I didn't get to take a proper thumbnail. That's what we have right now, but it will be fixed. <laughs> Just hang in there. And then if you refresh it around 2 p.m., you will see that has now turned into a pretty thumbnail with our live over there. All you have to do is click it like you would a regular video and then it will load you in. You'll probably have to watch an ad. You can skip it after five seconds. On the right side here, you'll see we do have a live chat. So everyone that's on right now can com comment, communicate, leave questions, whatever in that chat box and we can see it in real time. So while we're doing a walk around, we usually don't answer the questions, but we always come back to this desk at the end and go through everything and answer everything we can. All right, so Pat's gonna be our cameraman and Telluride expert today. He does drive a Telluride as one of his personal That's vehicles. That's right, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll also do a comparison at the end of our Telluride X-Line walk around to showcase what they changed for the new model year. Let's get into it, I forgot to skip the ad. All right, let's go. <laughs> so taking a look at the front end of the Telluride, this color is called Gravity Gray. It's our dark charcoal color for the Telluride and it looks fantastic. You can see we have our beautiful Kia logo and a lot of blacked out accents. So if you were a fan of the old night sky trim level that we offered, this is what they brought in to replace it. But they did offer a couple more bells and whistles features. We'll also take a look at our beautiful headlights. I'm gonna turn them on for you guys so you can see just how bright these LEDs are. It was kind of a hot topic for the new model year because they did do away with the amber daytime running lights, which were very, very iconic for the Telluride. However, I think these headlights, pardon the beeping, look a little bit better. I think it cleans up the look a bit more and it looks a bit more modern. Pat, what do you think? I think they look amazing. Tell mm -hmm. everyone why the car beeps. The, be the car beeps because we left it without the key. So I have the key with me here and it's saying, hey, you left me on and you took the key with you. So it's saying, turn, turn me off. <laughs> but I don't have the engine running, don't worry. I, though I kind of wish we did because it is so cold in here. If yeah. we could just heat up this room a little bit. For those bit. of you who are watching, it is minus 17 degrees out right now. Yeah, it's it, minus 25 with wind chill. Yeah. And we just tried to throw a cup of hot water in the air and half of it turns to snow before it hits the ground. Maybe we'll do that experiment during our live too, if you guys want to see it. <laughs> but let's get back into the vehicle. So beautiful LED daytime running lights and full headlight unit. At the very bottom, we have these beautiful LED fog lights seated down low there. And I like how they still kind of kept with the cubic light situation that they had in the previous Telluride. On our front grille, we have a blacked out insert, and then the outline is a satin finish. We have sensors in the front of the bumper, so all throughout, that's gonna pick up when you get too close to another car, wall, fence, gate, whatever it may be. It can actually, it's gonna warn you audibly and then show you a camera view of everything around you. The camera's right under the eye in the Kia logo. It's very well hidden. Of course, if you do live somewhere snowy like Canada, you wanna wipe that off when you're brushing off your car. I hope you're brushing the snow off your car. <laughs> All right, we'll come around to the side here. We have these beautiful 20 inch alloy wheels and they are blacked out. Following with the black accent theme, at the very bottom of our mirror, we have this kind of black insert with a LED turn signal indicator and a camera seated right underneath. This camera is gonna show you a live feed of whatever's in your blind spot. So if you're making a turn, it's gonna show you exactly what is there or if you're changing lanes, you know if there's somebody there. 
It does have blind spot monitoring as well. So on the glass portion of your turn, not turn signal mirror, you have, it looks like a little caution icon, kind of blends in. That's gonna light up to showcase that there is somebody in your blind spot. If you do still change lanes, the vehicle will revert you back into your original lane with opposing brake force to prevent a collision. Now, with the Telluride over here, we still have keyless entry where you can have the key with you. You just gotta press this little insert there and it'll lock and unlock your vehicle. So Pat, you've used this in your Telluride. Okay, so I haven't totally gotten <laughs> used to it to be honest, because yep. when you approach the car, it automatically unlocks. You don't press the insert. Yep. When you press the insert, it locks. Yes. So about the first 10 times, I just kept locking it. <laughs> yeah, you just kept locking your car. Instead of just waiting that extra second for it to automatically unlock. I do have to say, though, it gives the handle a bit of a cleaner look, so you don't have that black insert anymore. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of black accents, we got the raised roof rails. So this is a ladder or bridge type roof rail. Very rugged, adds to the, you know, Telluride rugged adventure appearance that this vehicle showcases. We got our gas cap on the left side, and it's a push one, so as long as your vehicle is unlocked, you just give it a push, it'll pop out for you. Along the back of the vehicle, we have our Telluride badging all across, new Kia logo, and then rear parking sensors. So just like the ones in the front, this will beep, not these itself, but inside the cabin will beep when you get close to something. It does have a power tailgate, so your soft press is right over here, opens up for you. And then with your seats, your rear seats up, we have a pretty good amount of cargo space, definitely bigger than the Sorento with the seven seater. And these do fold down, so you have these tethers that are very conveniently Velcroed onto the back so they're not flying around. Give it a pull and then a push, and they go right down completely flat. Now for your second row, one thing I really like that Kia added is you have physical buttons that you can just press and they'll fold down automatically. So I'll have Pat show those buttons. And they're labeled left and right. So if you're putting a bunch of stuff in all at once, you don't have to run around to the side of your vehicle and manually fold those down. I'll show you what the seats are like or the space is like with these guys folded. So you have a lot of space there if you're not constantly carrying around seven passengers. The Telluride also has an eight seater option and the only difference is instead of those two captain's chairs there, you have a third seat in the center. It's still very easy to use. You can get into the back very easily. Pat, you've sat in the back of the third row seats. How comfy was it for you? Yeah, I mean, I fit. I'm six foot two, um, but I like the front. Yeah. Actually, I prefer to drive. I'm just going to bring this back up because we will do a third row demonstration later. There we go. And then under here, we have a little bit of storage. Actually, then, there's a fair amount of storage there, isn't there? There's a good amount you of storage. You can see <laughs> it's kind of frozen. Yeah. Seriously? Uh, it the, is so cold today. The weather is no joke today. We're not even exaggerating. I, it's bad. All right, I'm going to close this up. Try to sneak my way past. We'll get another nice look at the styling of it and I think we should compare it to this 2020 that we have over here. Okay. So on this model. I'll this come to the front so yeah. we can kind of get a look at both. Let's get the lights on. So I'm just going to sit inside the car and talk so that this one doesn't beep too. Okay. <laughs> okay. So immediately you should see your amber daytime running lights on this one, right? Yes. All right. So that's a big change. Some people are unhappy about it, but I think it looks better on the 2023. I personally like the styling a bit more. And then also on the one I'm in right now, the 2020, you'll see there's a lot more chrome on it compared to the black that's on the 23. And that's simply to do with the package. We still have an SX Limited that has a lot of chrome accents. So you can still get this look if it's something you prefer. But the general size of the vehicle has all been unchanged. The engine transmission is the same. It's still a very spacious, very luxurious vehicle. And then on that topic, I should probably mention what the engine transmission specs are. So this, this is a 3.8 liter V6 engine, just a GDI engine with an eight speed automatic transmission. Towing capacity is 5,000 pounds, but if you go to the X Pro, which is one step up, you get an additional 500. Horsepower is 291 and torque is 262 pound feet of torque. Boom, <laughs> that's a lot of specs. <laughs> All right, now we'll hop in and showcase some of the amazing tech features that come in the Telluride. All right, so we have a power driver and power passenger seat. I'll have Pat show the seat controls just on the side there. Okay. And you'll notice inside this cabin, there is a lot of darkness, but not in a bad way. You have a black headliner, which is exclusive to this trim level. And I have a black headliner in my car. I love it. It makes the cabin feel so moody, very sporty and very sleek. Also helps if you have kids, you see 
prints less, might be a little bit easier to clean up depending on what they spilt. I'll close this door quickly. And just take a look at this cabin. One of the biggest changes is the screen. So a lot of people used to kind of ask, are we getting a full digital dash on the Telluride? Are we getting a full digital dash? Because it was our one car that was supposed to be our most premium vehicle and it didn't have it. Check this out. Two beautiful 12.3 inch displays. This one has your navigation, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, everything built in. And this is standard. So this main screen is standard on the Telluride. This digital cluster is not. It's available on the SX and up. However, it looks amazing. Um, it's really nice to have all the controls just at your fingertips. And you may not notice on camera, but the screen is slightly skewed towards the driver. So it's a very driver focused infotainment system. However, it's still completely visible to the passenger. So if Pat wanted to change anything, he certainly could. Nothing is obstructed. Okay, we'll slide over to the side. Under here, we have our general Kia menu. So you know we have our map, our navigation, our phone, all that good stuff. Something quite cool is passenger talk. So because this is a large vehicle and you may have people sitting all the way in the third row, you can actually project your voice to the back speakers and they can hear exactly what you're saying. It might be quiet down. It might be, are you sleeping? Whatever it is you're saying, it's, it's back there. Quiet mode will do the opposite. So if it's a bit too noisy in the front over here, it'll actually mute the speakers in the back to give them a more quiet, comfortable ride. It's great if you have young kids or pets that are trying to sleep or adults too. Under setup, this is where we'll find all our safety settings and little things like date and time, navigation, menus. So I'm just gonna go under vehicle and then driver assistance. This vehicle has all the safety settings that are available in the Telluride. So we have highway drive assist, which essentially uses your navigation, your smart cruise control, and your steering assistance. It combines all those three great features into one feature. So you're on the highway, it'll know the speed limit of the road, it knows the speed limit changes, it's gonna keep you centered, and it's gonna keep you at a safe distance from the vehicle ahead of you. It's amazing. You can quickly turn it on by just turning on your cruise control while on the highway. All this you can turn off though. So I don't know, let's say if, lane assist isn't your thing, you can quickly shut it off. You can turn off highway drive assist. You can toggle with your smart cruise control settings. So you can set your distances, your acceleration, how quick you want it to be. If you're someone who thinks the uh, distance might be a little bit too sensitive and the car brakes too quickly, you can have your acceleration a bit faster. You can change the braking, reaction speed, everything. So it's super customizable to whatever your driving style is. And the best part is, if that wasn't enough, you actually have driver profiles. So let's go. This vehicle hasn't been picked up yet, so there's no actual drivers, but if this was my personal vehicle, I could have it set to Gabby and then whoever else drives my car can have their own settings. It's really, really nice. And especially if you have different music tastes. So you have Sirius XM, AM radio, FM radio, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, everything. And so then- <laughs> oh. Let me add something. Interesting enough with driver settings, mm -hmm through Kia Connect, which is our telematics that you can use with your phone. Yep. Let's say your friend has a car, you can send the settings to your friend and it'll load onto their car. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so if you have more than one Kia, yeah. like my wife and I, we each have one and so I can send yeah. my settings to both cars. Oh, that's awesome. So. Learn something new. <laughs> my mom's Kia is not that new. <laughs> so I can't do that with her. <laughs> but let's scroll. Um, radio controls, media controls, all that good stuff. Now let's take a look at this cluster over here. So for your driver, of course you have your speedometer and tachometer, but watch what happens when I change my drive mode. So in the Telluride, you have four separate drive modes, comfort, eco, sport, and smart. Each of these will all change the way the vehicle performs. So sport will kind of stiffen your steering. It's gonna increase the sensitivity of the throttle. It's gonna feel much more peppy, but it will consume a little bit more fuel. On a bigger vehicle like the Telluride, if you want a little bit more efficiency, eco mode's the way to go. How that However, that may dull your throttle a little bit. It may not feel as peppy if you want to pass somebody on the highway. I always recommend putting it into smart, which will cycle between all three of those drive modes to give you the best drive for what you're looking for. If you step on the gas, it's going to switch you into sport. If you ease off the throttle, it'll keep you at comfort or normal. Comfort, oh my goodness, or eco. There we go. <laughs> so it's definitely the best way to go. In Canada, the Telluride is an all-wheel drive vehicle and it's all-wheel drive standard. So no matter what trim you get, you're going to get these three different drive modes. Snow, which is very useful on a day like today, mud, and sand. So this will change the all-wheel drive torque distribution, the braking, everything, electronic stability control, to make your vehicle have the best traction, best drive in those climates. However, the all-wheel drive system is a smart one, so if it senses slippage, it will adjust as needed without you putting it into a drive mode. 
from down or going moving down <laughs> we have this auto stop and start off so if you've ever been at a red light with a newer vehicle you may hear their engine shut off this vehicle has that it helps conserve a little bit more fuel auto hold is another great feature it may be hard for you guys to read just because this is a very aluminum-y color <laughs> and then the writing is quite what is white um, but when i press this it'll put an icon on my cluster here i'm driving down the road hit my brakes and completely come to a stop that auto hold will turn green and then my car will hold itself at a complete stop i can take my foot off the brake the car will just sit there as soon as i hit the gas it'll drop and it'll start moving again it's a great feature to have really nice if you drive a lot with um heavy traffic and you're constantly at a stop or if there's lots of intersections where you live where the lights take forever it's really really nice electronic parking brake right over here you just pull it up push it down to release and then we got our parking camera so if i press that you can see our beautiful 360 view camera you can actually zoom in as well we have our rear view camera here and then something that's new for the telluride is this beautiful it's another 360 camera but this one's kind of like i don't know virtual reality type style something like that so you can look at everything if you want to double check your parking you can see it all we can see the tiles on the floor it's very high resolution the quality on the cameras are fantastic i did mention um, our turn signal camera so i'll show you what those look like oh let me turn the car back on again let's see let me pull that back up so those are our turn signal views. So I'll show you your rear wheels of the vehicle, the side of the vehicle, and you can kind of see the back too. It's really handy if you are changing lanes, like I mentioned, or even turning around a curb, it'll show you exactly where the curb is. Even parallel parking, I just took that in. Really, really handy. I did not have this on my car and it's something I wish I did. All right, let's close that up. I'll talk about the steering wheel really quickly. So it's a leather wrapped steering wheel, standard on the Telluride, and all Telluride trims come with a heated steering wheel. Let me tell you, I did not feel my hands when I got out of my car today. A heated steering wheel is very nice. <laughs> on the right side, we have our driver assistance controls. So our smart cruise control. You can press the button here. Would it be better if I hold the camera maybe? Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Just wanna make sure you guys see the icons because it's a little hard with this type of finish. All right, so our notepad here, which cycles between our different menus on the main screen. You can see your navigation, your tire pressure, where you're at in your lane. This one to the right is to turn on your cruise control adjust your speed and pause it and this is to set your following distance now if i turn on cruise control on the highway this would automatically switch to highway drive assist then we have our lane assist so our steering assistance horn in the center and on the left side we have our bluetooth controls and media controls another cool thing they added for 2023 check this out so this is a digital rear view it has a camera right up on the um close to where the spoiler is yes. over there. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking so hard. And you can see exactly what's behind you. Really nice when you're backing up out of spots. So you have that camera, and then of course you have your full 360 view. Another thing that's on this vehicle that makes it super techy, hopefully you guys can see it. Let's try to zoom in a little bit, is our heads up display. So this is a 10 inch heads up display. It's gonna project your speed, the speed limit of the road you're on. If I was actually driving on a road, you can see it has little lane markers. Those will light up. It'll show you if there's something in your blind spot a lot of driving info all at eye level so you don't have to take your eyes off the road were you showing the turn signal uh cameras oh yeah i showed it on the main screen but i'll just quickly turn on the engine to show you guys what it looks like in a real world application okay hear that v6 roar okay <laughs> so i got my turn signal on to the left side you can see we see our wall we see the back end of the vehicle then the right side you can see our charger and the garage door really handy and then one more thing before we hop in the back i'll kind of show you guys the door i might take the camera again <laughs> so we have memory seats two different settings right over there all the windows have express up and down so really really quickly you can just knock everything down fold in mirrors and then a harman kardon sound system so those are your speakers on this side so to the right of the steering wheel Sorry guys, <laughs> I never really film. We have our brightness selector on the left, tow mode, which is exclusive to this trim and the trim above. It actually lets you set the percentage um, of the weight that you're towing. So if you're towing a heavy trailer and you're using 70 to 90% or 100% of your um, vehicle's recommended towing capacity, you can set exactly what you need. Hold, which is gonna open up your um, tailgate and then traction control. All right, I'll give this back to Pat. All right. 
you'll also see this. Now that oh, he's yeah. out of his seat, there we go. <laughs> X-Line is embossed onto the seats. The seats are leather, they're heated and cooled for driver and passenger. And the second row seats. Got a sunroof up here. This one actually opens. So I can, oh, it would help if the car was on. There we go. So you can actually open the glass on this one or you can tilt it up. And then for the rear one, the glass is fixed. So it's truly just a window, but the cover is powered. So I trigger, triggered that. It's just taking a second. There we go. Now we got our back window open. Go oh, look. All right, so two very comfortable passenger captain's chairs here. I'm gonna hop in quickly. You have these handles for easy access as well too. It actually is really, really convenient. Close this up so there's not too much lighting in the back. The speakers back here are still Harman Kardon sound, so your rear passengers have that beautiful, crisp sound quality, whatever you're listening to. If you're Pat, it's probably podcasts. Yeah, so podcast. So I recommend quiet mode if you're Pat. <laughs> <laughs> but over here, yeah, it's, it's very, very nice. And then I'll have Pat show on his side. We have our heated seat and ventilated seat button controls oh. just right above the uh, windshield, or not windshield, yeah, window right there. controls. There's also screen or window covers built into the vehicle. So you can quickly put those up. You can even have your window down and those up. It's really great if you have kids or pets, just an extra privacy. Up here is our climate control. So it's a tri-zone climate control vehicle. You can actually set the temperature and the fan speeds with the buttons here. If you're a parent and you have crazy kids, you can lock this and set it to whatever you'd like so they can't touch it. We do have LED lights back here as well. And then our vents. So the vents are built into the top, almost like an airplane. I love that look. The seats here, like I mentioned, they're super comfy, captain's chairs, and they do have armrests. They are on rails as well, so if you quickly need to adjust, you just reach between your legs, slide, and then it's super easy to move around. So even with it not completely at the back, I have lots of leg room. You can always move it closer if they need more leg room back there. Cup holders right in front of me. USBs as well, USB-Cs I should say. And then down at the bottom, we have a 12 volt and a household outlet, so 120 volt, or 115 volt, I should say. For our pockets, we have leather pockets with a little mesh insert and then hooks. I'm gonna quickly hop in the back. I'm probably gonna go in between the seats, but I'll show you how easy it is to knock these seats down or put them into um, fold mode. So at the very top of the shoulder, there's this little button here. Just give it a push. It'll slide the seat or unlock the seat so you can slide it to whatever you need. For me, I'm gonna go in this way and I have this center seat here. This isn't the comfiest seat in the house, but if I move over here, I have more room and it's not too, like I'm not too hunched over so my legs aren't too bent. I have tons of leg room. So I move the seat back a bit further. I think this might be actually, it's for the setting. Lots of leg room, cup holders and storage pockets and then more USB-Cs back here. These seats aren't heated or ventilated or anything, but it's nice that we still have some amenities. We also have, like I mentioned, our vents. There are LED lights back here. And then tons of storage. Um, you can fold, these ones go in a 60-40 split, so they fold separately. And then if I want it out, I can just press that shoulder button again and push the seat away, so super easy to get out. All right, now let me get out. Would you mind showing the passenger seat? Which one? Front passenger. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> Pat, this is a seven passenger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Specify. <laughs> okay, let's hop out. All right, we get a lot of questions asked about um, what are all the customizations you can do to the seats on the passenger seat? Because some vehicles will allow you to raise the height, some will only let you do the backrest. So on this vehicle, we have lumbar support, height adjustments, and back seat adjustments. So with this first one here, I can of course move it closer for the way. I can lift it higher, which is really nice on a bigger vehicle because if you are shorter, you may not be able to see over the dashboard. You can definitely do that in the Telluride. Our back seat or backrest, and then our lumbar support. So to get you nice and comfy and your back set up exactly the way you want it, and then life hack, lumbar support, plus a heated seat, goodbye back pain. You don't need to spend money at the chiropractor anymore. The Telluride will fix that. Actually, that might be more expensive. <laughs> Speaking of price though, I guess I can say the MSRP, it's 61,195 Canadian for this trim level. So 
it's all stored in my head. <laughs> okay, another interesting feature that it has is on the driver's side, uh, you can customize it, but after 30 minutes, it starts to massage your back using the, uh, the lumbar. Yes, so it does adjustments, right? I got a call from my wife, she's like, it's trying to push me, I don't <laughs> understand. So we had to kind of, oh, hold on, let's get the car. The what cars, the both cars, of them. Uh, all right. Okay, so let's take some questions, Gabby. Okay. Great job, by the way. You do, <laughs> you do a great job presenting the cars. Me? Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, someone said, talk about the wallet-sized cards to start an open card. Start, oh, okay. The... So if you look at my phone here, I'll see if I can show you. I'm gonna grab the key. You can see that I've got a Kia Telluride card. And so if I wanted to unlock the car, I would just, well, let my face do it. I would hold that close to the door and it would, it would unlock the car. And I would also stick it in uh, to start the car without a key, just using my phone. We would stick that into um, the, the wireless charger and that tells the car to go ahead and start. So it's a pretty cool thing. The setup initially wasn't that easy, but they've actually made it a lot better. You go onto Kia Connect and um, you request a digital card. You get an email, there's a link in the email and it downloads everything from there. So I'll also show you Kia Connect on my phone real quick. It's just logging in. Okay, so this is, I'll just get my Telluride up. Okay, so you can see here, I've got my Telluride so I can start, stop the car. I can um, turn on the heated seats, the ventilated seats. I can have it defrosted, lock it, unlock it all that kind of stuff. It's a pretty cool, uh, it's a pretty cool feature. Someone asked, does this come in hybrid? At this point, it does not come in a hybrid. However, the EV9 will be coming soon and that's a full EV, yes. Telluride sized vehicle. So next week we, in the US, there's a big uh, Kia announcement and they just teased it with um, a soother. I think they're launching the EV9, but I don't know. We're gonna find out next week, I guess. <laughs> Um, is there a distance required for using the app? No. So the app can be used no. anywhere. Okay, so now if we're talking about starting and unlocking the car and you're using the app, you can do it anywhere in Canada. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if you want to like drive uh, and unlock it using like the, the Apple Pay card, oh, yeah, that then you, there's a distance. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gabby, can I get the name of your Spotify playlist? <laughs> I, they all have different names. I can't even think of the name, but... It's just my first and last name on Spotify if you, if you want to find it. <laughs> Will a wireless Apple CarPlay come in future Telluride updates? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You saw how all of the safety settings are in the head unit, and I think that there's uh, a difference of opinion as to who's responsible if something goes bad. So we did do a video on wireless adapters, and Gabby yeah, hated them. Check that out, yeah. Honestly, Gabby hated them. I didn't mind them. I, I'm just not a fan of wireless CarPlay in general, but that's that's just my opinion. That's one girl's opinion. Um, Richard Spencer asked, hi Gabby and Pat, great video. I ordered an EV6 from Brantford late April 2022. Any timeline, please? Very excited future owner, thank you. Yeah, so I'm guessing you, well, tell us what trim you ordered. We are starting into March um, allocations, like, uh, like March of 2022 20, is our oldest orders right now and uh, we seem to be doing pretty good at, at getting them, but um, some trims are definitely slower than others, so let us know what trim you are, and I'll try and give you a little more data. Uh, I don't see it up there, but I know someone was asking about, uh, can you see if there's a comment on um, PHEV or, or hybrid sportage availability, like how many are coming? There oh, yeah, okay. Steven was asking, have you found your spreadsheet showing how much sportage PHEV are allocated for the year? So I think of the 19,000 units, uh, there's a thousand hybrid and thirteen hundred um, PHEV in Sportage. I, I, I'm going from memory, but I'm pretty sure it was you know it's kind of in around eleven, twelve percent uh, that are either hybrid or. Get the light back or, on. <laughs> yeah, our lights keep going off because we got a car block in it. Pat didn't pay the electricity. <laughs> uh, David, do you guys have an, an eight seater? So you can get the Telluride in an eight seater. Yep. Um, and the only difference is, so you saw the captain's chairs in the second row. It just adds a middle seat. And so that's, that's in the, the SX EX and, and EX. SX yep. trim. That's right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, I saw a good one, but now I lost it. 
I'm planning to buy a Kia Seltos 2024 model, but from your perspective in this competitive and challenging North American market, why should I go for Kia over Toyota or Honda in terms of reliability and performance? Well, I mean, if you want to check um, JD Powers, uh, Kia's been the number one in quality, I think, for the last six years. And so um, I think you should just give it a try. Toyota and Honda, like, they build a, a good car, but uh, let's face it, they're boring. Like, the, the interiors <laughs> are not as nice. Like, if you get in a Toyota, it's like going back to the 1970s. Um, you when, tell them. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, listen, it's one guy's opinion. No one has to agree with me. I'm a Kia dealer, but we buy and sell Toyotas and Hondas all the time. And yeah. The, the interiors are boring. The Kia product just looks so much better. Mm -hmm. So that, that's my opinion. Appearance is important. So, uh, so let's see. Ooh, that V6 with the fire emoji. Nothing purrs like this naturally aspirated V6. It's a true Sean Dexter weapon. finally <laughs> made it to the live show. Hello from Winnipeg. Minus 34 degrees right now. Ooh, okay, we're done complaining over here. Yeah. <laughs> We're minus 25, so yeah, yeah you win. <laughs> yeah. But no joke, guys, if it wasn't for my heated steering wheel in my car, I I think I'd have to call in today. I, yeah. I wasn't going to make it. it. It was rough this morning trying Had to get the Had this two inches of snow on the ground. I can't, I can't do it. I know, yeah. Yeah, I'm calling them well. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. Did we, we did say how much it costs, right? Yeah, we did. Um, oh, someone asked what the startup price is for the Telluride, and they start at fifty thousand one ninety five for the EX model. So that is considered the entry level, but there's really nothing entry level about it. It's already leather. You get a sunroof, heated seats, heated steering wheel, power options. It's a very, very well loaded vehicle. So, Gabby, I recently read an article in the U.S. Okay. where some insurance companies didn't want to insure older Kia or Hyundai product because of theft. And so for those of you who are watching, if you're Canadian and you have a Canadian product, it's been a requirement since 2007 that you have a fuel shut off in the car. Yes. So that means the hack that was out there where people were stealing the car, that does not work in Canada. Mm -hmm. We don't have a problem, like cars get stolen, but we're not a high theft brand here in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, will customers receive a call or an, an email or call when a VIN is assigned to a pending order? Coming up to a year, we ordered a Sorrento and curious how things are going. So when we actually have a vehicle for you guys, we'll definitely um, give you a call, reach out to you at our dealership. Um, I believe Gabby told my wife that her order was a factory accepted order. That's why my wife told me she's getting ANSI, LOL. So I think it was a Sorrento. Remind me what trim it is and I, I can make a comment. So. Um, I think I know which customer this is. What, what trim is it? Off the top of my head, yes. I, I don't remember. I think it was a Sportage, though, not a Sorento. Oh, okay. If you put a note in there, PHEV Oh, Sorento. PHEV okay. Sorento, okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, PHEV Sorentos are, uh, we're, petrol Sorentos are definitely ramping up. Yeah. PHEVs are a struggle. Gabby's mom ordered one in October, and it just got mm -hmm. allocated. October 21, mm -hmm. right? Yep. So uh, how long was that then? It's coming in... Yeah, it's like just over a 16, year. 17 months. Yeah, so we're, not just over. We are, <laughs> we are way behind in PHEV. It, like right now the average is, is a year and a half. Yeah. And so um, I'm sorry. We've like, had some deliver sooner though. So I've delivered quite a few that ordered after my mom. And I think it really comes down to color too. Yeah. Like that's okay. a big thing. If you have uh, two or three colors then that helps because then you're on two or three less rather than um, Red Rock, yeah, there's my buddy. Toyotas are horribly boring. <laughs> so <See>? boring. <laughs> that's, that's my team. Thanks, Red Rock. Um, um, can this Kia tow a 5,000 pound bass boat? Yep, sure can. Let's see. Definitely. Will Canada get a six-seater Telluride? Do, I don't see it happening. A six-seater? Yeah. No. No. No, definitely not. Um, don't be sorry, you'll have to deal with my wife. <laughs> well, if you guys ever have any questions, please email me or if you have my, um, my number, you can please give me a call or a text, and I'd be happy to, but we just don't have anything to fill it right now. Yeah. Um, Angel's asking, can the phone app notify you if the vehicle's open doors or started as an anti-theft device? Yeah, it, Ooh, it does. That's some, one, of my turn over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one of my favorite things the vehicle has. Um, so I park my vehicle just outside the video bay over here almost every day, and I'm, usually my hands are full, so I forget to press the button to lock my car. I go sit down at my desk, 
Two minutes later, my phone pings me and says, your Forte's doors are unlocked, press here to lock it. So you don't, I don't even have to go back there to lock it, I could just use the app. Just click the link, it's a great feature. Um, Looks I've just, like Gabby owns a green Lamborghini. <laughs> no, I do not. Playlist profile pick. <laughs> I don't own a green Lamborghini. I do have a friend that does though. <laughs> Gabby's secret car, green Lamborghini. Yeah, you guys thought I was driving Kia? No, <laughs> no. Um, Joseph, I've driven a few Toyotas and they are more bland than cardboard. See? I mean, obviously, this is the right channel for me to make a Toyota <laughs> comment, but uh, yeah, thanks, guys. I totally agree. Makes me feel good. Um, is there a way to power on the Telluride without starting the engine, like if I just wanted to play music for 15 minutes? So yes. You can't do it remotely, though? Not remotely, but you can. Yeah. You just press the start button twice without having your phone on the brake, and that will turn on your electrical system. That's right. Now, you, you saw a couple times that it shut off on us because after a period of time to not in case you've left it on by mistake to yeah. not drain the battery, it will shut itself off. Um, let's see. Do Steven, oh. sorry I'm running late, I had a neurologist appointment. Well, Stephen, I hope that went well. Yes, thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you. Um, Man, we have been going for a while, 2.37. Yeah. Oh, oh, geez. Um, <laughs> there's 51 of you that have liked it. There's 113 of you watching, and you know, obviously, the more you like it, the better the video does. So if we did okay, if you don't like Toyotas, hit plus. If you like Toyotas, hit like. Yeah, if, yeah, you, if, do you, either. if you don't like them, you can like the video. If you do like them, you can like it too. Just, just like the yeah. video, please, please. <laughs> Are there any more questions before we start wrapping up? Um, let's see, 2024 Seltos information. Yeah, so I did a video on this um, about two weeks ago now. Right. We don't have pricing on them yet, but we do know what trims we're getting and what colors we're getting. So of course, some features have changed. We did remove the EX front wheel drive model. Um, we got two new colors and they're very, very nice. New wheels, I definitely recommend checking out that video so you can actually see what the new options are. Joe's got a good question. He said, if we do buy a vehicle from your dealership, can we have it serviced at any KO dealership near our home without any issues? And the answer is absolutely. So, um, you know, as, as a, a, a Kia franchise owner, we're required to service any Kia product, whether it's purchased from us or not. Um, and bluntly, uh, if you do a good job in service, we make a lot more money in service than we do selling cars. Like it's mm -hmm. really how you build your business. So it would, um, any dealer that, uh, that would do work on your car, it would be good for them because they get the dough. So. Um, let's see. Pat looks like a millennial grandpa. Stylish. <laughs> okay, yeah. Pat. Okay. <laughs> Killing it. Yeah, that's right. With good hair, right? <laughs> digital um, two key cards. So we got a couple of questions about the digital key. Okay, so like whether or not you can get a, a physical card. So Maybe. we know that, that there's availability for that. Yep. We don't have a part listing yet. Right now it's just your phone, but I think in the US they probably do. So it, you definitely can, can program a, a, an actual key card rather than a phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pat, what did you gift to Geneva? I think it's what didn't I get for Geneva. <laughs> Um, that uh, little darling has everything she needs and then some. Spoiled. <laughs> so, and that's mostly for mama heart, so yeah. Let's see. Any uh, other questions, guys? Do you think they'll update the Forte or Serato this year? Serato. Uh, there is a refresh due on Forte, but no, it's not this year. No, I, it's not even next year. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little ways away. Um, How many works at the Kia Brantford sales there? When I come, I'll get you guys donuts and coffee. That I, sounds how, good. How many workers do we have? I don't know, like 10. Yeah, we're a small dealer, it's a pretty smaller dealership, yeah. right? <laughs> um, I've heard there's an issue, the grill openings allowing road debris to cause damage on the Telluride. Is that the case with these? I haven't had, well, I don't drive um, one, but I haven't so heard in we've, service. We've probably delivered several hundred Tellurides, and I think I've seen it once where a stone went through the grill and, and damaged, um, I think the condenser, uh, but no, I, I really haven't, we really haven't had an issue with that, so. Is that something warranty covered? I don't remember. I mean, physical damage is not covered by warranty. Yeah, that's right. But um, it depends on, on what exactly happened, if there was a defect or not. So how long a wait to get a Kia Forte EX? Joe, we, um, we get an allocation a couple times a month, and like we have a white uh, EX Forte that 
uh, we're just waiting to find out if it matches one of our sold units and then it'll be available for purchase. So like if you needed something in the next 90 days, that's pretty reasonable for a Forte. So. Um, the question above that, I think that's a good question to answer. Need help, when would the Telluride Hitch be available for the 2023? I need a straight answer from someone, can't get one from my dealer. Uh, I wonder whether or not we could buy one through the US dealers. They, they may have one. So I'm not sure. Like you, from what I remember, you can get the hitches. It's the wiring that you can't get. Mm -hmm. Is that what the question was? Um, it didn't say anything about wiring. It just said towing hitch. Being yeah, available. no, you can get the hitch. It's the wiring that, uh, like, for plugging in your uh, the lights on a trailer that is back ordered, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure when that's going to be available. But uh, you can definitely get a hitch because we sold one last week and installed it. So it said neither available. No. Nope. The hitch we can get. Maybe he's in yeah. another area. I don't know if you're in Canada or not, but yeah. Uh, but you, you can order them. If you're not in Canada, see if you can get one from Canada. That might yeah, be an that's option. Yeah, that's another <laughs> option too. All right, I think we should probably wrap up today's live. Yeah. We're going a little over schedule. Um, of course, we will. Today's Friday, so you guys can catch us next week, Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time again for our next live. We'll be doing two days of Hyundai, maybe even three if. Uh, it all depends on product. It all depends on what we have. That's right. <laughs> but okay. we are getting, or we already did get quite a few cars today. So we'll have fresh, new, exciting vehicles to film next week. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Have a great day, guys. See you in a Kia.